Hi everyone, today Reem and I will be discussing our final music signal processing project which uses beat tracking to find the holes on a breadboard. For our project, we will be identifying hole locations as well as straight red wires on a breadboard. We will then annotate the breadboard images with the locations as shown to the right. Our system has three main blocks, image preprocessing, hole identification, and component identification. For the image preprocessing block, we pass a breadboard image in, find the outline of the board, locate the corners, and then crop the image and remove any optical distortion using the keystone correction algorithm, which is available in NumPy. Now for the fun part. Hole identification applies a beat tracking algorithm to the rows and columns of the board. The intersection of these beats are used to predict hole locations. So the question is, what is beat tracking? Beat tracking is a way of taking a noise signal, enveloping it, and finding the location corresponding to beats. This algorithm rewards sharp onsets, but penalizes them if they're off beat. The penalty is based on a chosen hyperparameter, lambda, which will be discussed later. The reward penalty system of the algorithm makes it very useful for constant beats, such as in music, but also in images. Now let's see how it applies to hole identification. The first image you will see is part of a breadboard. Overlaid in blue is the energy of each column. The column energy is then passed into the beat tracking algorithm, and the resultant beat onsets are shown in yellow vertical lines on the bottom image. The same algorithm is then applied to the rows, but because of power rail markings and strange spacing between sections, the board was split into four sections and the beat tracking algorithm was individually run on each section. The output is shown below. To find hole locations, we simply take the intersections of the rows and columns, as shown on the right. These intersections are then overlaid on the grayscale image to show hole onset locations, as shown on the right. Now, we'll move into uh, component identification. Because we have predicted hole locations and the only components we are working with are straight red wires, we can simply invert the color of the grayscale image so that dark areas are high energy and probe each hole with a rectangular Gaussian kernel to determine the energy around the hole. Low energy holes are then filtered out and the holes that are left are predicted to have components. With this, we have completed our system diagram and we'll move into our system characterization. We tested hole identification on 31 images of empty breadboards, and we were looking for the number of rows and columns that were correctly identified. For component identification, we tested the algorithm on 36 images of breadboards with 14 different configurations of wires, and we were also looking for the number of components that were correctly identified. With that, let's discuss our metric. For hole identification, a correctly identified row or a column would be just as you can see in the top left image where the algorithm detected the holes in that row. Versus the top right, you could see that there is a missing row of holes. As for component identification, a correctly identified component would be similar to what you could see in the bottom left, where the wire is completely encompassed within the box, whereas an incorrectly identified component would be uh, partially identified, as you can see in the bottom right, or even completely missed. We experienced with varying the lambda parameter, which, as Nico mentioned, weighs the penalty function. The main takeaway was that um, the use of penalty function is mildly effective, generally because the data of an empty breadboard is very clear. It likely would have been just as effective to find the peaks instead of the implemented beat tracking algorithm. That being said, the beat tracking approach works very well for the for the columns, but not as well not as well for the rows because the power rail markings on the board fall on beat, so they often get detected. For component identification, we concluded that using energy detection based on the whole locations was not as of as of a robust method to accurately identify the wires. It's important to note that wire identification depends on the whole identification. For example, if a component is located on a missed row, um, it's by default not going to be detected. Additionally, since we're searching for holes with high energy, as the number of wires on the breadboard increases, it becomes harder to distinguish between empty holes and holes with wires. You could see the energy near each hole in the histogram to the left that when we have one wire, there is a very clear high energy outlier versus the histogram on the right with seven components. It becomes less clear which holes uh, have wires and which do not. With that, thank you so much for listening to our presentation.